Five years ago, Diamond C embarked on a journey that would revolutionize the gooseneck trailer industry. And on today's episode, episode number six, we'll be taking you back, sharing those memories with you, and sharing all of the discoveries we made along the way. It's been a journey indeed. I can think back and remember gooseneck trailers from when we were kids and just stories that our dad would tell about different uh, innovations and things he was pioneering along the way. Uh, never satisfied with an ordinary gooseneck, always looking to advance the product, advance the industry, build extraordinary. I know that you can remember some of those same stories, right? For sure. Yeah, you know, the, you know listening to him tell the tale about, you know, issues to fix and problems to solve was, was always a lot of fun to us. And one of of the ones that stands out is sway control you know he he had gooseneck trailers that he had sold leave and come back and going into hay fields and hauling hay is always such an uneven load and they would come back and be tweaked and he he had to figure out or discover a better way to keep those trailers straight and so sway control was born um, it's a, what a lot of people call torque tube but today sway control is alive and well in fleet necks and goosenecks across north america so to us i mean it's just a it's a a great example of pushing forward and figuring out you know solutions and discoveries and so um, it leads to the question like why engineer beam you yeah. know where did that come from Yeah, so of course we always strive to build extraordinary gooseneck trailers for the first 30 years of the company's history did that. I mean, well-respected brand in the industry. Fleetnecks were undoubtedly one of the leaders in the industry, but then just through, I would say starting around like 2005, um, through like 2013, 14, 15 in that time range as, as uh, I started leading product development at the company and um, you know really studying where the materials were going and how the trailers were being assembled. And, uh, you know, through the same time period, we had built, I mean, we had hauled, yeah. you and I both had towed <laughs> goosenecks all over the country, used hundreds of gooseneck yeah. trailers. So I got to watch them work and use them and experience them. Uh, and, and of course, see them on the highway, ours and every other brand too. Right. And just as time went on through that, I became more and more convinced that there just had to be a better way. There yeah, had to be a more efficient way to use the material. There's no doubt. I mean, at the end of the day, there's, there's lots of different brands of goosenecks, but the thing that they have in common is the structure, the core. Most of them are 12 inch, 19 pound beam. And you buy that mill beam and you hack it up and, and try and make it work for, you know, a gooseneck trailer. And there, that's again, there's had to be a better way to form the frame. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, we were all using those standard mill beams before. Yeah. Everybody in the industry, most everyone else still uses those standard mill beams. And to build a, a strong trailer with those mill beams, you have two options. You either buy a big, fat, heavy beam that takes away payload from the trailer, um, or you buy a lighter beam and add a bunch of reinforcements to it. Well, that, that's the thing, is that over the years, the most common misconception is if you want it to be stronger, just throw more weight at it. That's just right. throw more steel at it. And that's, I mean, it's power to weight ratio. That doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So we were, before, using some of the heaviest beams in the industry and adding reinforcements, and still, under heavy load, you could watch one sag under yeah. heavy load. Any brand out there. Yeah. And that's, that, that's when we said there has to be a better way to, to build a gooseneck trailer. And it was actually, you know, through that time period, we were expanding a lot, building different uh, buildings to build trailers yeah. in. And w every time we ordered a building kit and saw all these pre-engineered beams come in, you know, some of them were four feet tall at the, at the peak and, um, you know, a foot tall on the end and had custom contours in between. And that's where I would say the original inspiration for building our own beams in a, for a trailer application came from, uh, you know, looking up and saying, if they can do it with building beams, I can do it with trailer beams. Yeah, that's um, very, very intentional. I mean, they build them to a certain spec to perform to do a certain job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Specific to the job. Right. So effectively, there's no, uh, there's no extra dead weight. Right. There's no dead weight in, in the beam. Yeah, they sure. use the material as efficiently as they possibly can. 
Um, so, you know, with that inspiration, it was around the end of 2014, early 2015, somewhere in there, that I started talking about it with Valentin, who's, you know, right-hand man in product <laughs> development. Um, started talking about it with Valentin, saying, you know, if they can do it with a building beam, why can't we do it with a trailer beam? And so we kicked that idea around some and, and dreamed about it, and then it was in July 2015 that we actually took a, a couple thousand mile long road trip across the southern U.S., visiting a few different factories that I had lined up for, uh, that we knew had beam processing, beam building equipment for different applications, um, to go see how some of it was done. And we, we toured a plant in Alabama, and it, it was when we walked out of the building, I mean, mm -hmm. we said, we're doing it. Yeah, the fire We've got was to lit. do it. Yeah, the fire was lit. We fell in love with it. Um, we said, we know we can do it and build a stronger, lighter trailer. Um, so when we got home, we recruited our engineer. Uh, we had one one engineer on staff at the time. We recruited him and uh, dedicated him full time to this project with us. And it was about six months of every day. Um, engineer, you know, working on drafting, and then me and Valentin coming and sitting over his shoulder and. Uh, working with him to cultivate and develop this design from concept to something we thought was marketable, that we right. could build, that was actually stronger, lighter, in a better way. Yeah. Um, so it was the early 2016 when we built the first prototype. Yeah. Um, and that, that first prototype was hand welded, the beams end to end, um, at about uh, eighth of the speed we weld them today. <laughs> um, the That's neck wild. was all hand welded, yeah. um, hand fabricated, you know, hand cut, a lot of the hand cut shapes and different things for that first prototype. Um, but we got that first prototype built several weeks in building it. Yeah. And, you know, even on the first one, we just knew right away, not only was it a different ball game for the performance of the trailer and the performance of the steel, but it was also a different ball game for the assembly process. Yeah. Um, it was very, very different with a lot of challenges to assemble um, that we weren't used to with traditional beams. Um, and, and standard beams, so to speak. Yeah, there's always the, the the things that are not anticipated, right? Yeah, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this should this this is going to make it so much easier, and then this plethora of of other things comes up in the midst of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all these little nuances to exactly the order it has to be assembled to get yeah. it to come out right. And that first one, I mean, it was really several iterations of, you know, we get a section tacked up and then realize something wasn't quite right, yeah. have to cut it and start again, um, sure. but. All all that to say, we got the first one on the ground, and the first load testing we did, we knew we were on to something powerful. Um, the, the first, I mean, first draft of a prototype. Granted, it was not the prettiest she one, was pretty rough. Um, but we were proving out the concept of the beams was yeah. the main purpose of that. And you know, load testing, actual load testing, sitting right next to a comparable traditional beam trailer. You know, where the traditional beam trailer was sagging an inch we were deflecting a quarter inch with the engineer beam trailer. Yeah. And the engineer beam trailer weighed a lot less on the first draft. Yeah. So we knew right away, like, this is powerful and we've got to keep moving forward um, to see what was next. So that's when I got involved. I mean, we knew that if we were going to uh, make a go of this new fleet neck design, we had to really have it battle tested. We had to make sure that it could withstand the, the kind of abuse that we all know these trailers go through. Um, so we, we started seeking out beta testers, and uh, we ran across this, this guardrail construction company, which they put tons of miles on one, loaded heavily every day. And so it was, seemed like the ideal customer and he was skeptical because you know this guy had pulled umpteen different brands of gooseneck trailers over the years and he thought gosh it just can't be can't be any different I mean it's just a trailer right and I can't tell you how many times I've heard that over the years that it's just a trailer but he I can tell you was a firm believer that after he got done terrorizing that trailer for about two months the, the amount of miles we don't know but I mean loaded heavy every day day in and day out I mean he 
was then a believer that that there was a reason for a better way. Yeah. So, you know, right away we were getting feedback from him yeah. and he I remember he was sending us weight tickets from where he was crossing the scale uh, with crazy loads on the trailer, sure. all kind of different equipment and things. And so right away, again, we knew the trailer was performing that first prototype. So we got to work on second prototype revisions. And at that point, you know, we, we were beginning to have enough confidence in the concept that we said, if we're going to do this and, you know, re essentially redesign, reinvent the way we build gooseneck trailers and, and lead our industry in that, then we're going to work the trailer tip to tip. We're not just going to build lighter, stronger beams. We're going to start at the tip of the coupler, from the tip of the coupler, through the neck, the box, the steps, um, every step along the way yeah. to the very rear end of the trailer. We're going to work through and optimize every detail that we can with this same concept of stronger, lighter, higher performance, extraordinary, um, highly engineered for performance. And so while that one was on the road, we were really spent about six months on the design work, just in CAD. I mean, on the in the design work of prototype number two. Right, because that one we had taken some of our things, like the ramps we already had, and a few yeah. things, and kind of adapted them because we wanted to vet out the beams themselves. But as we talked about the the beams, uh, engineer beams for a building, we had to take that same concept into all the other areas, the ramps, the box, as you mentioned, the step, and so while. We had the, when we got that second one ready. That's when we had a little more fun, right. you know, because it had some of the updates and things. But what was what's cool is we, we talked about earlier the whole hay hauling experience. So we looked for a second kind of vastly different type of way to test the trailer. And everybody knows East Texas. There's a lot of hay to be hauled. So uh, we found an individual that when spring hits, that's all he does, and he terrorized that trailer all spring. No, I don't know how many thousands of pounds of hay that got hauled, but uh, you know, they're in and out of hay fields, low places, uneven distributed weight, all that kind of stuff. And with all of these revisions, we, you know, the results were no different. Right. They, it performed. Right. Yeah, so at that point, you know, great feedback from him. We knew we were approaching decision time. We'd already invested a year and a half of R&D and prototyping and, and time in, in design and, you know, these on-road tests. We knew we were approaching decision time of, is this actually something we're going to overhaul our production system and are offering to our customers and move forward with it or not? So I know, you know, then we, we started brainstorming this idea of bringing in a customer focus group to get feedback from someone other than ourselves just this you know crazy check are we <laughs> are we on the right path or not yeah. and I know you pretty much put that together you want to yeah we, we the the sales team you know we, we got together we we scanned our whole dealer base you know across North America Canada from tip to tip of the US and we put together a very intentional group of dealers to bring them in and, and ask them that question like hey watch this see what it is you know get a feel for for it. Are we crazy? Are we not? And it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, we, I know you remember assembling the whole, uh, like the, the testing. We did load testing for them. We showed them the flex uh, or the non-flex compared to the old ones. We had a traditional beam fleet neck and an engineer beam fleet neck side by side testing with these customers. In multiple configurations. Yeah, in all kinds of configurations from 14K up to 30K uh, trailers to show them, right. you know, and get that ultimate feedback. Yeah. I remember for that demonstration, I had ordered a, a SkyTrack, a rental SkyTrack, for the purpose of loading for that demonstration, um, so we didn't take one out of out, away from the you know operations crew for right. the day, and they didn't have the one I ordered, so they brought one up, yeah, one size up. If well, I one remember, size up in SkyTrack is about 10,000 pounds difference. Yeah. If I remember, it was about 26,000. Yeah. And yeah. so when you're talking about only a span of pretty short wheelbase. Yeah. Uh, it was a heavy machine. <laughs> and in front of customers, we lifted the tires of a dually pickup off the ground. Well, I remember the comment being it's made. Wild. I was I asked, I was like, is this going to be OK? And you're like, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> so what well, we did, and what's awesome is it was a raving success that day. I mean, I remember every customer that we had here that day, every day 
either. You know, keep in mind, guys that had sold and handled thousands. and experienced thousands of yeah. gooseneck trailers in their careers, every one of them was sold out. Yeah. Let's do it. And then, I remember some of them even saying, can I cancel my current orders and wait on the engineer being trailer? We're talking a year. Yeah, yeah, we were still far out yeah. from being production ready. Well, we even had them sign on disclosure agreements yeah. because, you know, we had no idea at, the, at that time. And there was some of them that were so giddy about it. You know, I feel like they were pretty hard pressed to keep that secret. Yeah, that's right. So after they left and we got their kind of unanimous consent that this is on point, let's move forward with it. I know that, you know, our next steps were right away put together our kind of action plan for from that date to live production, which was uh, about 15 or 16 months timeline that yeah. we put together to um, flesh out the designs. Because at that point, we had only you know built a few and only right. had a few beam configurations ready. Um, and and then those were course, all pretty hand welded too. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah. I mean, those first prototypes were all hand welded. So we had uh, to do a lot of research still on welding technologies and what, how we were going to build the beams right. efficiently in production quantities, assembly process, all those things. A lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, but you know, at that point again, we were determined. Um, we had proved it out. We knew we could do it. So we put together that timeline, started organizing the team around it, and got to work to lead up to our debut at the 2017 North American Trader Dealers Association trade show in September 2017. So the show was on September 9, 2017. You know, we went into that show with, you know, we, we were confident, but we still had a lot of lot of work, a lot of proving to do, a lot of work to do, like the butterfly. <laughs> so, you know, we, we go into that show knowing, you know, we're in uncharted territory, right? You know, we're fixing to unleash the beast, uh, you know, only a handful of people across the North America know what we're doing. And so, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. We actually built a bridge in the in the trade show booth using three trailers. We had two side by side and then one spanning the gap with 18,000 pounds on the center of that trailer to, to show that it still had arch and no sag. I mean, which is unprecedented at the time, you know. Uh, it was a it was a spectacle, it was really cool. Um, the show was a success, you know, there was so much buzz energy. around it. The yeah, it was, was energy great. was insane. Current dealers, you know, just going nuts over it and so. Competitors it, it, too. Yeah. <laughs> There was a few. There was a I few remember that, one. There was a few that visited the booth. I remember one that you know, guy we know. There comes by and says, "Man, good job. They look phenomenal." But you can't do that in production. Like, okay, mm, we'll tall, see. Big, tall words. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so you fast forward. That was in September. You fast forward January of eighteen. You know, we're we're what we think is production ready at this point, you know, and and just an onslaught of additional challenges coming our way that, you know, unforeseen, but, you know, made us better. Yeah, for sure. I think about it like Lewis and Clark pioneering <laughs> into, that's how I felt at the time. You know, we had prepared as well as we could. To, to launch these trailers. Um, it never been done before, the yeah. gooseneck trailers. Um, it never been done before on our production scale for, for yeah. sure. And uh, so we were ready to launch, we start production and just right away encountered some real hard snags on just kind of what I was talking about that, that we experienced in prototyping. Um, the particular order of things and how it has to be assembled and the tolerances within were far tighter than we had ever experienced with a traditional beam trailer. Yeah. They weren't nearly as forgiving as far as the assembly process went. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was all hands on deck at that point. Engineering team, um, R&D, all hands on deck for us to get it figured out and keep moving forward. And so it was a few weeks in and we had to shut production for a couple of weeks again. And then it was actually March 2018 that we started back up full steam ahead, and uh, since then have built over 3,000 engineer beam gooseneck trailers. That's why. Um, you know, the, the challenge is doing all of this with the engine still running. You know, we had customers that had orders, and you know, when you shut down one design, and it's not like we had a whole other factory to, to start this right, deal in, right. so we're trying to retro, you know, over Christmas break, swap things out, and I mean, it was just, it, it was a tall order. Yeah. And so, but, but you're right. 3,000 on the road. Um, you know, since then, the in 
inception into the market has been been awesome. You know, it's been such a fun thing to watch. Um, you know, the, get, being able to market them or help market them it has been awesome to me. Um, it's just it's we found niches and things that we didn't even anticipate. Yeah. You know, and in way we were able to to help the end user through their customer right. experience in ways that we we had not anticipated. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can build. Uh, we do we do it every day. We build longer, he, uh, higher capacity goosenecks than were ever really available before. Yeah, for sure, um, which is real tangible value to the end user. Um, I mean, you're, you're, there's no doubt when you say that, you know, when you're talking, say, a 40-foot gooseneck or a 44-foot gooseneck with 16K axles, you, you're in the 1,500-pound range of weight savings, and which is, I mean, that's phenomenal. When you're talking about a hot shot or behind a one-ton dually, it's a, a game-changer. Yeah. That's, that's enough payload to cover all of their chains and boomers and things that they need and still yield more capacity. Yeah. So another milestone that came about with the engineer beam trailers is, you know, as soon as we we went to that show in 2017 with patent pending run, and tell about that kind of journey was yeah. months long. Man, uh, you know, I can honestly say I'm not not so. One thing that we just weren't super confident in yeah. is getting a patent on a trailer. Yeah. I mean, in our industry, it's kind of taboo. Right. I mean, I don't know of a whole lot, but um, you know, we went to that show armed with that that patent pending kind of thing, and we're, we were super proud of it. Uh, but you know, fast forward a, a bit, it was January of 19, and it issued, and I think I was about as surprised. But it's it, it's your milestone. It is. I mean, it's really cool to have you know a patent on on this trailer in the way that it's uh, designed. Mm -hmm. So That's right. big kudos to, to you and the design team. Uh, total, I mean, for total team effort. Listening, right? Yeah. <laughs> total team yeah. effort to get it done, man. Listening to the market, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I spend a lot of time in the sales and marketing department. You know, I don't get out here much I, or with the engineering team, but I've been hearing rumblings about, you know, Engineer Beam 2.0, and I catch bits and pieces, but kind of tell us more. Like, what's the story? Like, what yeah. the heck? So, so Engineer Beam 2.0, that's the unofficial name for our next round of innovations um, and advancements on the Fleet Neck Engineer Beam product line. Um, uh, in this journey along the last couple of years that we've been building all these Engineer Beam goosenecks, we've been studying, you know, tip to tip, every detail, just intricately on what materials use, the profile, the, the strength, how it all fits together um, from the materials and how it's fit together to the actual components, the, even some of the components that we purchase, how they fit into the design. And we've just discovered another round of innovations, advancements that, that we can put, that we can package and put into an engineer beam fleet neck that, again, just one up that extraordinary level um, for the trailer owner, the guy that's investing in it. it stronger, lighter, more user-friendly, more ergonomic, um, all those things. So we're balling all that up into unofficially Engineer Beam 2.0 that we'll introduce later this year um, to the market. And man, excited about that because it's just another another big step in advancing gooseneck trailers um, in our industry in that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so just recently, in the last couple of months, we, we started infusing the Engineer Beam uh, technology into low boy dump trailers, equipment trailers, all of our gooseneck packages on those, you know, the same, uh, with a lot of the same benefits, uh, the significant, some significant weight advantages in certain places. Um, you know, Tons of strength advantages. Lots of for strength, sure. yeah, yeah. In, in the frames, there's no doubt. Uh, and it, it opens the door for, for so many different, um, so many different opportunities. Yeah, in those sure. We, we've already got today over 800 different beam configurations that we maintain and develop constantly so it, it's a it's a big task but um, it, it's as we've talked about we've seen some incredible results already incredible innovations um, building traders that are making a difference in the life of the trader user the guy that's invested in it and yeah. well, you know that's uh, I mean that's we you go back to our, our mission that's what we're doing is fueling the growth and success of our, our team members our customers and our community that's what it's all about. And, and this project is a just a wild representation of doing those things that it hits all those boxes that's right you know I've talked we've talked through this 
video about our perspective and our experience with it and how our hands have been on it, but man, I, I couldn't give enough credit. I cannot give enough credit to the team of people, you know, several hundred strong, standing behind us every day of the week, um, not only building them, designing them, um, designing parts for them, selling them, marketing them. I mean, every step of the way, the team has just been phenomenal, and we're so blessed to have uh, just an incredible crew of people that are making magic happen every day, and yeah. you know, leading that charge, and you know, sold out to um, fueling the growth and success of our team members, customers, and community. Yeah. Product innovation is one of the number number one ways we do that. Yeah, for, for sure. sure, it comes full circle. Our, our dealers can be grouped into that, you know, their customers, everybody, because without the support and their trust and that kind of stuff in, in our team, you know, these things can happen. Yeah. So yeah. what's so exciting about it is, you know, we've, we've already several years in the journey. Um, we've seen some phenomenal progress, built incredible trailers that didn't exist before. Yeah. But we're just getting started. Yeah, just getting I'm started. Lots you. of fun ahead. Uh, it makes my heart race standing yeah. here. It's just like <laughs> kind of fluttering, just because I mean it, it's so it, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. exciting, but it's it's uh, life changing stuff. So. That's right. Yeah. Fun time. Cool. Not too sure about you guys, but stories like this inspire me to dream more and to be more. And to be honest, that's what Diamond City is all about. Uh, we would like to hear about you and how this story inspires you. Uh, but like always, guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode.